Okay, so welcome everyone um, to our eighth seminar talk. And I will continue the story about the uh, colors, so the circle calculus. Uh, today, the two color calculus, basically, or the multicolor calculus. And I want to start by recalling what we have seen last time. Okay, um, so I can't watch the chat, so, so please just um, unmute yourself in case you have questions. So last time we have seen the one color calculus. This was for the Coxeter group, which is just, just, a, just a single vertex in the Coxeter graph notation. And let me give this uh, vertex a name, it's S. So everything in this one color calculus was uh, labeled by S, but I was a bit lazy and not labeling it because just everything was labeled by S. Today I will need a few more colors, um, so I hope I will be a little bit more precise with labelings. Um, and I really want to think of those labels as colors, right? La oops, sorry. Um, labels are colors. Okay, and then the one color calculus, the one color calculus, that was formally speaking the uh, C linear, so home spaces are C linear, monodal category. Generated by, well, where those pictures, by right, four pictures, a merge, which I also like to draw is this one. A split, which I also like to draw as this one. Note my terminology, I'm calling the second one a split. It means I'm reading from bottom to top. So reading is in this direction. Ah, so merge and split. And then there was this one, which I was always also drawing like this. This and this one, which I was also drawing like this. And these are sometimes called dots. Both. Lollipops or whatever you want to call them. And generated by just means you can stick them together as, 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 as you want. And the relations in this category, in this category, were the following relations. Well, we had the Frobenius relations. I will comment on that in a second. And then we had two other relations. Um, uh, the first one is sometimes called nil potency. It's, it's saying there's a handle operator, which is this guy, remember. Oh, sorry. This guy is zero. Remember that in, in the other calculus, this was just the handle operator. And then there was a sliding relation. And I will show them to you in practice in a second. And the sliding just means, if you have a lo picture locally like this, well, you can just slide the polynomial, to, uh, the, the uh, th by the way, this guy here is called a barbell, okay? Oh, not a barbell, a barbell. Uh -huh. okay. Because it looks like a barbell, of course. Uh, this is equal to twice. So this is really the combinatorial relation. And I will explain this in a second, why we want this relation. But this was, this was the definition of the category. Fits on one page. Uh, it's actually pretty nice. Uh, and the Frobenius relations were, uh, were the topological relations. 
uh, something like this, which in the other picture was something like, oh, now I'm running out of space, but you get the point. So here's a long one, now here's a short one. And there's one catch, and I haven't mentioned that completely explicitly last time, there's one short ca small catch, one catch, so let me stress this. Really the reason why I like spine diagrams for circle bimodules uh, above to those topological uh, cobordism pictures. So those are called cobordism pictures. Cobordisms. So these are surfaces and these are spines. So one catch. I really want spine pictures. Why? Because last time I said um, the object BS in my category or S, whatever. So just the object S. So it says, gen sorry, I've generated by. So the generating object here is it's just S or alternatively BS, whatever you want to, want to think about it, and the morphism generators are those guys. They do it. Um, this is a Frobenius object, that's why it's topological. But it's not a symmetric Frobenius object. And I will explain in a second what that means. So you don't have a picture that looks like this, which in terms of those diagrams is something you can certainly do with your corporate. So th these, we don't have that. In particular, in particular, so we have to be a bit careful. Um, a picture which looks like this, for example, which in spine diagrams would be, sorry, in, in topological diagrams would be, would be kind of the handle operator with a little sphere in the middle. Let me make some space here and then you have a little sphere in the middle. In the topological world, you can just say, okay, I take this little sphere, I pull it around and I just put it outside. Right? But this would require to, this would require those guys. So at one point you will pass some strengths and we don't have this. So this is not equal to, and I will explain in a second, oh, sorry, this is not equal to this one. And I will explain in a second why we don't want that. In particular, this really means you should think of the spine diagrams as really being embedded in the plane, right? So in the plane, of course, I, I can't pass through the strand, right? I can't pass. Uh, in three space, of course, you could just go around. So it's really a planar calculus. So calculus is planar. Think, let's think about it for a second. Otherwise, this relation, of course, would be, would be stupid anyway. Because in terms of Cobordism diagrams it would look like this. You have a sphere on the left, minus you have a sphere on the right. This would be equal to something like this. And this doesn't, doesn't make sense, right? In, in three space, I could just toss, turn this around anyway. So this side would be just zero. And we certainly don't want that. Let me explain why we don't want that. So the only thing, that's the point, the calculus is still completely topological in nature, but you have to be careful. You want to do it in the plane, not in three space. That's, that's what I want to say. Um, so let me make a remark why we really want that. Why do we want that? Well, 
let's see. In Zergle bimodules, and in the end we want to do Zergle bimodules. Um, remember, you have something like this. So this strand here secretly just is BS, of course. Uh, so if I want to think about having a BS strand here, and remember that this BS was uh, R tensor over the symmetric ones R. So there were some things like this, F and G, and there was some kind of perforated wall and only certain polynomials can pass through, right? Only certain, in this case, only S symmetric polynomials pass. Really? And for all others, you had to pay a, uh, had to pay a price. And this relation is exactly keeping track of what kind of price you have to pay. Let me explain that. So this, by the way, it immediately means we, we don't want a three-dimensional picture, right? Because otherwise we could just pass things from left to right for free, basically. We want a planar picture. Okay. So let me give you the interpretation. Um, I, I like the above definition, this one, because it's, it's pretty short, pretty slick, uh, but maybe it's not completely, there is a different definition and the book uses a different definition. And the different definition, which I'm going to explain in a second, is, is nicer in the sense that you can easily see the, uh, the connection to several bimodules. So alternatively, you could actually say, so what the book, the book's definition, let me just, just do this. They would alternative, they would allow so-called boxes, something like this, where F is an element of R. So F is a polynomial. Um, I don't need that. And actually you don't need that. And then for example, uh, ah, sorry, not for example, not too fast. But in my notation, remember that this is just uh, in the alpha S's, so completely in general. In my notation, I want to identify my barbell with actually the polynomial alpha S. And alpha S are just the variables. So alpha S is the bubble. You should think of it as just being the monomial alpha S. Okay. So if I have now any F, so now I'm in the general Coxeter system, I have any F in R is of course some combination of whatever. It, let me do an example. E.g. F is alpha S squared plus alpha S, alpha T, something like that. Maybe it's a coefficient, who knows. Um, then I could actually write all of those pictures you see in the book. They correspond to something like this. Okay. Um, so you don't really need those boxes. It's easier to see the connection to circle bimodules, as I said, but you don't need them. You should think of my barbells as the monomial generators of the, the ring R. So these are the monomial generators. And of course, by definition, any polynomial can be written as some product of those monomial generators, some product, whatever, of those monomial generators. Um, and for example, this relation actually, e.g., is just a sliding relation for the alphas, which we have seen several times with the CS. This is just saying if I have an alpha S here and I want to slide it across my S wall, I have to pay a price. Okay, it, it slides but not freely because alpha S is not symmetric. It slides up to, up to a factor 
uh, let me get my notation correct, which in this case is two times this element in, in the end. So this was, uh, if you remember, this was this kind of CS elements which we have seen. Anyway, was just my remark. So I, I don't need it, but it kind of makes sense, right? Those, those lines are like the Zorgel bimodules. And on Zorgel bimodules, you can only slide certain polynomials freely. And that's why you have this relation. This relation tells you what kind of price you have to pay. Very good. So let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Mm -hmm. What on earth? What? <laughs> Better. Okay, example. We do a calculation. Okay. So I claim the following. And it's it's kind of an example and a lemma at the same time. Um okay. Uh I claim the following. Let me draw a diagram. Okay, so this goes from SS to SS. And let me draw it a little bit differently. Let me put a little in here and remember that makes sense right they that I, I i have i can put put these things into any phase i see for example into this one and for some funny reasons i need a one over two here let me call this e1 and well you might ask why on earth have you put the barbell in the bottom spot i can also put it in the top spot let me call this e2 and i claim that Claim whatever I claim that the identity on S on double S is actually E1 plus E2, and I claim E1 and E2 are orthogonal idempotents. Well, how can we see that? We do in the calculation. For instance, if you would have E1, think of it as living in a box, and I want to stack, want like to would like to stack E2 on top. This would be kind of the product E1, E2. Then the picture will look as follows. Up to a one over four. But you see here, this is the handle. So the handle operator is zero. Handle zero. So in this way, in this direction, they're actually zero. And you can do the other calculations as well. Let me just do one more. Ah, uh, I could do it the other way around. You would get again get one over four. Let me just scroll back so that you can double check. So E2 is now at the bottom. This is E2, this is E1. Um, and the point is E1 has its bubble at, at the bottom and E2 has its bubble at the top. So they will meet in the middle if I do it this way. And here they don't meet, right? Um, they will meet in the middle. So now you can do sliding, slide. So let's say, oh, let's say we want to slide this one out. So what do we get? Well, we get the same picture with one slid out plus, well, I'm all, of course I'm forgetting the one over four here, whatever, one over four times two times this picture. Very good. 
But you remember that this picture here and the same for the bottom was just, was just this. So you can throw it in. So this diagram is actually just uh, this one. Very good. So I, I like this diagram, so I won't touch it anymore. So let me just take this diagram. And let me forget the one over four, whatever. And I'm doing the same trick. I want to slide this one out. Okay, I'm sliding it out. Here I go. And I get the error term. which now will look like this. And this one dies because there's a handle. And this one is just what it is. And if I have done now my calculations correctly and uh, I would have been careful with the scalars then you would see that actually those two diagrams will cancel. Minus two, minus two, those will cancel. So the whole thing is zero. And similarly, you can prove. Similarly, you can prove all the other statements, and in the end, you will really get that the identity is this picture with a one over two. Plus this picture with a one over two. Okay. Why is it good? Well, let me just see. So this is my idempotent e one, and this is my idempotent e two. So this picture is basically saying. We explain that that so here is SS so it's BS BS and you have it splits into two orthogonal idempotents you will see it split into something some plus thing corresponding to E1 and corresponding to E2 and what could it be well let's see let's cut it in the middle so here you see S in the middle so it actually, the, both are projectors to BS. So actually, this is isomorphic to BS plus BS. And I'm, I'm ignoring shifts here, but this was the relation. Um, if I would have done shifts, then I would see that this is actually shifted by one, this is shifted, shifted by minus one. And this is actually the relation BS times BS in the Hecker algebra is equal to V plus V inverse times BS which is very good because that's what we want. And these tricks that I played above here is a kind of categorifications of this statement. Good. So let me summarize. We have this one color calculus. Here we go. I could do it this way. Here you go. Um, it's pretty easy. It has objects which I just call S. You don't sort of think about it as being BS, but let me just call it S. The morphisms are those topological pictures, mergers and splits. And whenever you see a handle, and the handle is empty, it's zero. Whenever you, um, and, and you could slide polynomials. That's the sliding relation. Under the interpretation that polynomials actually are just some linear combinations of, of those bubble diagrams. And this calculus completely categorifies the only relation you would expect in, um, in, 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 in the corresponding Zergel uh, bimodules for, for, for just the Coxter diagram with S. You need to work a little bit harder to prove the theorem itself, like it's fully faithful or whatever, but not too much. Good. So let me now explain the two colors. Now two colors. And I hope I will be careful. Now two or actually more colors. Okay, now I want to consider some Coxeter diagram. And whatever it is, 
something, I don't know, this one. I want to give those guys names, S, T, U, V, maybe. And these are now my colors. So I consider any Coxter diagram for now. And then define now, definition, define the universal Zergel category. Associated to. Well, let me give this a name. Let me call this just W. And I will define it as follows. Oops. Is again uh, C linear monoidal. generated by, well, now objects are just my colors. Right? The object generators are the colors. I will give an explicit example in a second. And the morphisms are as above, but with all possible colors, with all possible monochromatic colors. So no color mixing. Oh, this was supposed to be a color. <laughs> okay, example. So, or remark. So objects in this category. Are just sequences of colors. For example, I could have uh, what? Uh, S T S U S T U, whatever. Um, and you should think of this as, of course, B S B T B S B U. Yes, oh, this was too long. Yes. And the morphisms in this category are exactly the same morphisms as before, but now for all possible colors. Well, let me make these colors. For all possible colors. Etc. And the relations are exactly the same relations as before. You need one more. You need this funny relation. Um, and I will explain that in a second. No, maybe I give it a new page. You need one more. Whenever you have a strand, it's S. But now you have a barbell label T. You want to push it to the other side. And you can actually do that. Um, but you have to pay a price, of course. Uh, There are some scalars, I probably get them incorrect now, but the pictures are the important one, are the important pictures. Okay. Remember the monochromatic re relation just don't have an error term here. Don't have this error term here. In the uh, multicolored version, you get another error term, but otherwise it's exactly the same relation. Don't be scared about it, it's, it's really just the same. And before I give you an example, let me do the main statement now. Let me call this category um, uh, 
a diagrammatic BS for universal. This is certainly not number of colors. And the theorem is a diagrammatic BS universal is actually isomorphic to the Bot Samuelson. I saw this was a circle category for W, where W is the corresponding coxeter graph. With all edges labeled infinity. This is called the universal of course, the diagram. So all edges. So no relation between the generators, except the ones you already know. In particular, after additive and closure, DBS universal is actually isomorphic to the corresponding as BIM. For this stuff here. And this is pretty nice. So we are already halfway to where we want to go. So whatever kind of diagram I have, as long as I ignore the braid relations, um, the multicolor calculus is exactly a multicolor version of the one color calculus. That's it. So it's topological in nature and up to polynomial sliding, it's, it, it's pretty nice. Let me give you an example. How to work with this category, for example. So let me split the example in three parts. So I have some diagram. E, it ends somewhere, it starts somewhere. Very good. And I, I, I claim I, I don't have without any floating components. So floating components would be some barbells you could put in some phases. For example, you could have something like something like something like this. So no components in the faces. Then it's 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 pretty easy to see by topological arguments. The handle operator is zero. Then the following holds. Uh, D is zero. Well, because handles die. Well, or D is a tree, so something like this. But no closed circles. And additionally, by associativity, completely a topological argument, um, in this case, in the last case, D is equivalent to any other D prime tree as long as the boundary is the same. So we don't actually don't have many pictures. Well, and how can we see this? Let me give you, let me actually explain to you the proof. Well, you remember, we don't have any floating components, which really means we are now in the completely topological picture. So you would just, um, you could use this normal form, which was, you had some number of merges at the bottom, 
you had some number of handles in the middle and you have some number of splits got no splits at all at the top and well if the genus is too big this dies because the handle operator dies the g has to be zero uh, if d is not zero and the normal form is then completely determined by the number of uh, uh, mergers and splits, which determines the boundary component. Very good. Okay, before I go on with my example, this is really saying, it's not too bad, right? So arbitrary diagrams, um, as long as you ignore, as long as you ignore floating things, are actually just trees. Any kind of tree can appear, but they're just trees. Or to be completely precise, forests, right? So um, up to, up to, any com connected component is a tree. The second part of the example, let's say we allow barbells, polynomials. So any polynomial in my diagram, so it might have some barbells sitting somewhere. I can always slide it out. Um, up to, I'll make this precise in a second, uh, some easier diagrams. So what does this mean? Well, let me give you, without making it completely precise, let me give you an example. Can always slide things to the side. Here's my example. Um, this looks pretty stuck, but no, it isn't, of course. Here you can apply sliding, you can push it out. Uh, plus, minus, who knows. And this is an easier diagram because it has fewer faces. It's actually a tree. So this is zero because there's a handle and this is a tree. So the precise statement here is actually any D is in the R span of trees as left modules or right equivalent. So you can always pull all internal components to the right and uh, to the left. And what remains by, 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 the, by what we discussed before is either zero because you see a circle or is a tree. So tree is basically up to barbells span, span the whole spaces. Okay. So calculus isn't all that bad. It's actually pretty easy. Let me just say this. Let me give you a completely explicit example. So example. Let me do ST and the end of ST. And let me do the home of ST TS. Okay. So the end of ST, oh, the page. The end of ST, so. I should find now diagrams which I can draw in between here. So what can I do? Well, I certainly can connect S to T. Uh, sorry, maybe I, I give it some different colors. S, S. 
T. I can certainly connect T and S. Uh, but I can also create forests. So I, I can decide I want to cup off T, then I have no other choice than to cup off S, uh, T as well, and do this, or something asymmetric like this, or this. And all other diagrams will be in the R span of, of those diagrams. So all other diagrams you could possibly draw between S and T will be some linear combination of those diagrams. So it's not, not that bad. Very good. So let me do the other one. So this was of course N S T. So let me do this one. Same game. Now, now S and T swap sides. So what can I do? Well, let's say I, I'm, I decide to connect those two. Remember that I can't cross diagrams. So the only thing I can do right now is this one. Or, of course, the other way around. Or I could just be completely brutal and just close everything. And that's it. So all diagrams will be now in the span of those. I mean, this is pretty nice and pretty easy, actually. Um, now you can do whatever, whatever you can. Now write down your, your arbitrary sequences and you always need to connect them using trees because otherwise you create zeros anyway and you just draw all possible trees. That's what I did upstairs. This was just well, forests to be completely precise. I have drawn all possible forests. So each connected component is a tree. Very good. But this example, so this means that the home space um, in my diagrammatic Walt Samuelson universal category between S and T, T and S is actually um, three-dimensional over R. I always have to write over R because you can put in arbitrary floating components and they are always um, some barbells. You can put arbitrary barbells. That's why it's over R and not over C. So not over C. It's infinite dimensional over C. It's over R. Anyway, but the, you basically can ignore that. But R is basically C. Okay. Anyway, it's three-dimensional. But now let's do this example. But, which is fine for our Coxeter diagram. Maybe I shouldn't write but. For this Coxeter diagram, so the universal one, but in this one, we have the relation that st equals ts. Um, so let me recall for you that this is actually the dihedral group d4, which is isomorphic to z2. Uh, four-dimensional group and of course the basis is, is this is just one the unit s t and s t and we have the relation that s t equals t s and let's look at the diagrams so i had those diagrams here um yeah sorry
you can actually check or you can actually see that none of these diagrams, I hope I got everything correct, none of these diagrams is actually an item potent in the following sense. The diagram plus its reverse diagram. So now I should, well, okay, let me do it like this. Let me call this diagram Y. And let me put the reverse diagram on top. So it's just reversed. And none of these will be in either important, no either important. And this is bad. This means this means BS BT isomorphic to BT BS cannot hold. In, in the universal one. And it shouldn't, of course, because the universal one should be the universal one. But of course, Let me just write it like this. So we are, we are slightly in trouble. We are kind of missing a picture. We are kind of missing a picture here. Um, and now comes really one of the nice features about diagrams. So if we would work in terms of, in terms of circle bimodules and there is just no item potent in your endomorphism ring or in any kind of algebra, then you are just done. It's, it isn't just, it just doesn't exist. Here we can cheat. So now we can cheat actually. The nice fact about the diagrams. We just invent a new diagram to be this item potent. So trick is invent basically being the corresponding isomorphism. Okay, so let's think about it, this together. I want an isomorphism from S, S to TT, and I want a nice diagram for it. Um, I don't know how you feel. I can, I can imagine exactly one diagram, which I would like to draw, and it looks like this. And I call it the four valent vertex. Well, I imagine here's a vertex and then it's four valent, this is four outgoing edges. And the relations that you need here would be something like this. plus all color combinations of those. So any kind of color inversion you would like to see. And that's it. So if I, if I do this and I add a, so this is the important one, then there are a few more, the books list them all, a few more relations. I will comment on that in a second. Uh, it's a pretty long list. Usually they're, they're very harmless, but just listing them takes a while. Um, the only one I want to highlight is a topological one. Namely, you can think of having your diagram like this. Um, let me put it in a box. Oh, maybe a different color box.
Well, and what could you do? Well, you could put, pull this one down and you could pull this one up. And it almost looks like the other one. And yes, that should hold. So let, let, me, let me see. So we, we start here, following all the way up here. So it, here's the left one. So it starts left and goes right. And the other one goes the other opposite way. So this is one of the relations. This is called cyclicity. Uh, and this just means now, so cyclicity is just, is just another phrase meant that um, the, the calculus is still topological. This just means I can really twist my extra generator as much as I want and I just get the other generators as you expect them to get. And I, I don't want to mention the other relations. As I said, you can have a look in the book. Usually they don't turn up in practice and they are not so important. Of course, they are important to make everything precise, but in practice they are not so important. Okay, and let me call this category, to get a category, let me call this diagrammatic bot Samuelson for uh, Zmod 2s. Then the theorem would be is isomorphic to the corresponding Bot Samuelson. Just the same theorem as before. Uh, ES bin for W, and W is now the Coxeter graph, which has as many colors as my. My, my diagram and it's just unconnected. So secretly you have edges labeled two everywhere. But remember that we don't draw any edges labeled two. This is just a bunch of copies of Zima two. And K is just the number of colors. And similarly for Uh, for zero by models. Okay, summarize, and then I will wrap up. Okay, so we have we start in the beginning. We had the one color zero calculus, which was the calculus for uh, for this graph, and it was basically topological in nature, up to a slight defect that. It's not symmetric, so you can't easily slide things. You really always have to use the sliding relation. Okay, but up to that, it's it's pretty nice. And the multicolor version of it, at least for some easy Coxeter diagrams, for those Coxeter diagrams, was also pretty easy. It was just basically stacking um, uh, the one color calculus together in different colors, and it's still completely topological in nature. You could play games like, oh yeah, you could count trees and circles and whatever. Very good. And then I showed you actually how to construct now uh, the corresponding circle calculus for this graph. So when all braid relations are commut commutativity relations, right? This just means ST equals TS for all colors. Then the calculus is still the same. Um, you just need one more generator, which is just a very natural thing, right? S and T should commute, so I draw a crossing to let them commute. And this actually generalizes. And this is when I will stop in a second. So this actually generalizes. This generalizes in the following way. So this is basically saying almost all complications of circle diagrams are in one color diagrams. At least for those Coxeter groups. This generalizes as follows. Uh, this general. Okay. 
and the, the catch here is that I can only formulate it rigorously uh, for this diagram. Why? Because I kind of want to say I just draw my cox of the diagram and I have now random labels here m, n, k, whatever this is, but it doesn't quite work. You have one additional extra relations, but it's almost. So what I'm saying is almost a complete calculus. Almost a complete calculus. Okay, let's try to do it together. So you could have invented those those diagrams. Uh, now you would, let me give those names, it's S and T, okay? So now you would look, let's say M is three. Remember M is this one. Um, then you would look for a diagram between S and T. So M equals four, you would look for a diagram between those guys. And you could check by just writing down all the trees that, that you never get enough diagrams. You shouldn't, right? The universal calculus is not describing this Cox integral, so you shouldn't get enough diagrams. And the only thing I can imagine that I could draw here is, well, I have one T at the bottom, I have two T's at the top. The only thing I can imagine is I kind of merge them. But then I'm kind of in trouble with the S's. So I want to merge the S's as well. I just draw this guy, which is called the six valent vertex. And again, for the same reasons, because if you have a, there's a, secretly a vertex in the middle and you have six outgoing edges. And you just continue to play this game. They should all pass through the same vertex. My, my drawing is just horrible. And this is eight valent vertex. And of course, let me just mention that the eight is just two times four, six is times just two times three and so on. So in general, you would get a two M valent vertex. And now the statement is I would define a diagrammatic what's Hamilton for this diagram uh, M S D same as before. Plus two new generators, those M valent vertices. Uh, I'm missing one, maybe here, something like this. And crucial, only the two M valent vertices, so only the two M ones. I only need two extra generators, so one, and it's it's mirror. I only need, to, so I don't, if M is 500, I don't need uh, the generator, the whatever. 100 valent vertex. I only need the 1000 valent vertex. Very good. So only this one. So there's basically one extra generator, and it's mirror, of course. Plus relations. Relations as before. Plus. Um, Relations like like this one. Let me just do it in the. Um, let me just do it in the m equals three case because it's just easier to draw. So you can stack this one on top of itself. And this is the idempotent. In the corresponding end which 
splits off. Uh, the corresponding indecomposable and topological relations for this new for those new diagrams they could look for instance like this again the amical three example so I could pull this leg down I could pull this leg up and if you twist your head a little bit now then you would see that this is actually just the same as the other way around so calculus is still completely topological in nature Where am I? What is going on? And you're only missing some harmless relations which I don't want to state uh, involving those those for those n valent vertices. And the main theorem is then, you probably already guessed it, my Diagrammatic bot Samuelson for this diagram is actually isomorphic to the algebraic side. And similarly for the local bar modules. Right? Similarly always means like under additive and uh, under additive closures. And this is pretty nice because this just means, I mean, the calculus isn't all that bad. Those usually don't turn up very often in practice and the rest of the calculus is, uh, are those topological pictures, like all those tricks you can play with those diagrams, something like this. It's actually not too bad. And now you would imagine doing the same calculations in circle bimodules, and it's pretty hard and pretty hopeless. I would say this is actually much easier. Than working in SBIM itself. I should mention, of course, that this relation, uh, in this case, it would be BSBS. Um, so those m valent vertices, let me just finish with that. So this is the main theorem, very nice. Right. Um, um, for example, mm, what m is three, where's this three valent vertex? Um, and this is kind of the isomorphism. This gives you the isomorphism from the following, which is which is the bright relation in this case, B S B T B S plus B T. This should be isomorphic to B T B S B T plus B S. And this one is the other morphism here, splitting off this component. And this is just a braid relation. In terms of the BSBT. Right, remember that th this was a little bit more complicated than the usual braid relation. But the, the point is there will be a leading term which is just the rate relation, really this one. And those diagrams are basically the isomorphism for the rate relations. Uh, 
Okay, let me summarize and then I'm done. Okay, so we started by looking at the easiest scale. You always should start, of course, by looking at the easiest possible case. The easiest possible case is uh, this diagram here. And the calculus turned out to be almost completely topological in nature in the sense that you have to a little bit be careful uh, when it comes to floating objects. You just can't float them around. It's more like a, a one, a two dimensional calculus. But otherwise it's completely topological in nature and you can play several tricks with your diagrams like I, like I did here. Um, like I did here. And this generalizes to basically everything. Right? So strictly speaking, it totally generalizes to those diagrams here um, in the sense that the calculi for those diagrams is just, a, it's just gluing together the one color calculi and one color calculus, depending on how many numbers of colors you have. And you want, if you want to add extra relations like the braid relations, you add actually extra generators which satisfy still pretty topological relations like this one. And you can still play with your diagrams as much as you want. Like for example, um, and you can think of it like pulling it around. Oh, this should be red. And this is actually equal to. Uh, let me see whether I got this correct now. So any kind of that topological trick you want to do with your diagrams, and as, as long as you do make it uh, do a, a planar, top, planar topological trick, will work. That's kind of built into the calculus. Okay. Um, thank you very much for listening.